yeah, yeah. That, immediately. It, it, okay, well, that yeah. kind of makes more sense because <laughs> you never really hit Samus out of the beginning of her upbeat. Yeah, like, no, I was thinking, a grade. I was mixing up the frame that it hits out of shield. That's why I said five, because if you do it out of shield, you go through a uh, frame of jump squat and then um, it hits on four from there. So it's technically the fifth frame out of shield, but it's actually invincible starting on the first frame. All right. Well, we got Cyrox versus Frankly. This is the match, uh, the last matchup of the wave. So let's see if Cyrox can make it into top 128 winners. Uh, I believe his actual tag, Frankly, is uh, T Rock based on the bracket. Oh, okay. And Cyrox so, is off to a huge lead here. This is what I'd expect, honestly, because um, in this matchup, it is very difficult to keep up with your opponent if they are just more technical than you. And uh, Cyrox, you know, even though he's like relearning the game, I would still expect him to have like a player who's not too well-known vested in that area. Right. Okay. Yeah, really insane pressure. Frankly, frankly could have, um, he could have shined out a shield quite a lot of those aerials. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's definitely something for him to work on in the future. Yeah. But nonetheless, props to Cyrox on some really, uh, really good skill pressure. Yeah, he's been playing very solid in general. Uh, T-Rock has had a couple of openings that he could have actually led to a stock already, but Cyrox has not made it easy on him. Cyrox does miss the ledge dash there, but not a huge deal at the moment. Yeah, at, I, at this point, I don't agree with Cyrox lasering. I think it doesn't do anything at this percent. I would really just force the issue because yeah. every, time you, every time you laser, you really um, make yourself susceptible to giving them a big opening. Frankly, could have capitalized, you know, even though he didn't. And right. At the very least, it's like a positional like advantage. Like they can get a little bit closer to you if they want because you're lasering. Yeah, I think uh, the difference between like the advantage that lasering provides is more apparent at like earlier percents when you're getting them above like tumble percents for neutral air, things like that. But once they're at like 130 in this matchup, I would just start to go on the offense. Right. Oh, okay. T Rock with a nice little uh, stanky leg edge guard with the downward angle forward tilt and should clean it up there. Nicely done. So far from over, especially in a Foxido. Yeah, always winnable. I would have backed through there if I was, if I were frankly, because I think you need to start taking risks. Yeah. Um, I, th I think up throw, uh, there's a very low chance that you, that you convert into his stock from that spot. Right. That was a really, yeah. really nice dash chance wave dash back. Ooh, okay. There it is. Yeah, the up throw was definitely questionable at that percent. If you get in that situation where you manage to get a grab on the opponent with your back to the edge when you're down a stock, back throw them. Just see what yeah. happens. Like it's it's better than the alternative ninety percent of the time. Right, because it's a very difficult route to finishing off the stock from that up throw. Like you may get a good combo, but at that point, you actually you need to be looking for more than that if you are right. planning on actually winning that match. Right. Yeah, you got to... definitely changes the game, the the way that the stocks are, the way that the percents are. You have to keep that stuff in mind. There's something to be said for, you know, having a consistent game plan, but sometimes you got to switch it up, especially in scenarios like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Fox Dittos have the potential to be highly volatile. It feels like, frankly, didn't opt into decisions that would have made that the case which mm -hmm. was his downfall in that game because when you're when you're behind by that much um you should be taking as many risks as you can for sure we'll see though it looked like uh you know frankly aka t rock started kind of picking it up as the the game went on that game one so maybe just needed to kind of get in the zone might see a little bit of a different game too if uh if t rock can play more like they did at the end of that game one, as opposed to the beginning of that game, they might be able to uh, keep it a little closer and possibly even force a game three. Yeah, I think um, the biggest problem out of Frankly's gameplay at the beginning was the lack of shine out of shield because Cyrox did, like quite, quite frankly, he did a lot of unsafe aerials on Frankly's shield. Um, and the whole time, Frankly was just sitting there, and it kind of looked like one of those old clips of Mango's Fox. Where he's, <laughs> like, he's like just nair shining in 2009, and like we don't know, like no one knew what to do. Yeah, <laughs> you know now it, now it, 
See, right there, for example. Yeah, that, that yeah. definitely could have been shined out of shield, 100%. Yeah, and I also I also disagree with what Cyrox is choosing to do there, because I would I would be shining, uh, shine grabbing more often if I were him. Yeah, I think that's that's just almost like a universal like melee issue. There's so many spaces that like just get do all this shine pressure on someone's shield leads to nothing. They could just shine yeah. grab and actually get a lot off of it. I think it's like a like there needs to be a change in philosophy. Like shine grab should actually be viewed as like the baseline pressure the, and the main option. Yeah. Yeah, it's like if they can't show you that they have a way around shine grab, then why deviate? Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense, actually. I agree with that for sure, too. But that being said, like, it's... it's. I feel like, for whatever reason, it's just a hard, like, option to remember to pull out sometimes. Like, I think, honestly, due to this, uh... 20, this 20xx dystopia. <laughs> wow, whose fault is that? Whose fault is that, Aziz? I might have had to whose do it. Whose fault is that? <laughs> I mean... Dude, if you're gonna if you're shining their shield, you're looking for a grab anyway. You're trying to convert the shine yeah, yeah. into a grab. <laughs> right. No, it, it definitely makes a lot of sense to to default to that option, but certainly not the case here. Oh, that was really cute. Yo, yeah. T Rock all of a sudden is cooking on him. Yeah, that was a beautiful stringing that he did there. Again, Cy uh, Cyrax with the run crouch up tilt. That input is better on the box because you can go straight from down to up more, oh, yeah. up more easily. That's why he, right, I've right. seen him do it twice now. Um, so it's interesting to see him do that. But yeah, Frankly has a nice lead right now. Oh, Cyrox getting it started. Oh, and Cyrox overshoots with the uh, dash attack, or he whiffs, I could say. Um, dash attack's a very risky option when you don't have the opponent cornered. Like, if you're just using it in the middle of the stage, they've got all that room to dash back, and that was why Frankly Ooh. got out. But here yeah. we are, last stock. I'd like to see Frankly take it, just because I want this to go to a game three. Yeah, I'm trying to see the game three. And yeah. uh, he's done so much better. I think we've kind of seen more of his potential. Oh, oh. but that raw That's double it. jump shine. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a ton you can do about that. As soon as you start your up B in that spot, if your opponent nails the shine, you're just done. Yep, he sealed his fate the moment he up B. It had to be a side B, but, you know, mm -hmm. it is one of Fox's best 50-50s because you can't really react to um, whether the Fox is going to go for that or not because he's got other options that beat the side B as well. For sure. All right, let's take a look at this Red Bull replay package from the potential last set of wave D, we got T-Rock and Cyrox. Cyrox starting so hot in this first game. Yeah, just bread and butter edge guards. They're even easier on battlefield, but honestly, Fox is one of the best characters at edge guarding himself. Just with the uh, Armada Shine to finish things off, it's um, pretty easy these days to finish off a Fox who has to up yeah. from, like any of these positions. Right. Um, yeah, man, T-Rock started that second game so well up for Sox at two, but Cyrox made it, made it happen regardless with that, uh, beautiful shine at the end. And T-Rock still got a chance to make top 128 on loser side, but Cyrox will be making it on winner's side. And I believe that pretty much wraps up the winner's side 